Hey guys, and welcome to the Garage Time. My name is Tom, and this week I'm going to try to align all these panels and perfect the door gaps and panel gaps on this 45-year-old classic car. So please wish me luck. These parts are all over the place. Garage Time. Before we get started, last week I took a little bit of criticism for welding these flares on um, without keeping safety in mind. So definitely not a good idea to you know weld in shorts and uh, you know not wearing the right right gear. So that's great feedback. I totally agree. Um, I'm wearing pants today. I'm going to do a little bit of welding, I think. But uh, generally. You know, even if it's uh, TIG welding, um, small amps, you know, 20, 30 amps, you still should wear uh, UV protection. Okay, if you remember from my intro video, this car was purchased as an empty shell. So all these parts do not belong on this car. So this fender here is from a, a much later car. It's from a galvanized car. Uh, this door here, I'm not sure what year it's from. And the shell had some damage on the lower right. So you can see down below, there's a chunk missing. So that's part of the rocker. Uh, that's all been fixed underneath and the alignment's been checked. Suspension points have been checked. Everything is now straight, but I need to put that rocker panel back in. This fender is just flapping in the breeze because there is no uh, support structure behind that. So I have the part uh, from Restoration Design that is the fender support and I'm going to be putting that in today as well. But the goal is to try to align all these gaps uh, as best as possible. Okay, so my strategy in getting all these parts to line up is to really line up everything based on the tub. So this car has had some damage on this uh, passenger right side. So what I've done is I had, a, I had a buddy help me get this windshield in place. This is a brand new windscreen and it's not an authentic one. It's uh, like a, probably from China but uh, it's put in place without the rubber. So I have these wooden shims and I also, just so you know, there's, there's some tabs here welded on the back so this windshield won't fall through, but it's, it's, it's sitting in place now. And what I'm looking for is an even gap um, all the way around. So I know that this A pillar is in the right place and it's not twisted. The gap along the bottom is, is pretty even. So along here, along here, it starts to get a little bit narrower. And then over here, it gets pretty tight. Um, pretty tight on this side, but it's also pretty tight on the other side. And then along the top, it gets larger again. So there's about a, um, 3 16 of an inch on the bottom, about 3 16 of an inch on top. And then over here on the sides, it gets pretty tight. And it also stands a little bit proud of this flange where the seal goes so it this windshield doesn't doesn't really fit that great but it fits evenly on both sides so it's equally bad on this side here's the gap along the bottom tighter 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 here it's about zero here's the gap on the top starts to get tighter in the corner and then this gap is is pretty even all the way down but it's the glass is basically touching, this is a, some tape on here, but the glass, which is right behind here, is, is right up against the metal flange. It seems to me, based on using this piece of glass, that this A-pillar is okay. And once I know the A-pillar is okay, I can start referencing parts based on the tub. So the next thing to align would be this hood. Right now I need to loosen the bolts and get the gap against this cow section to be to be perfect. And then from there, I can align everything else. I whittled down this piece of wood into a three millimeter sort of checker. So I've been uh, working in this section. I have adjusted the hinges so I can get a, the best kind of average gap. So I'm sticking this in between here and I want nothing tighter than three millimeters, um, especially if it doesn't have paint on it. So this is now going in pretty well. It's a little bit tight right here. This will not go in, 
So what I was just doing is a little hammer on dolly right here. I'm putting this dolly here on top and I'm hitting this ridge from the inside and I'm just shrinking the metal so that that gap can become larger. Also, uh, if, if I can't get it all the way just using hammer and dolly, I will sometimes use my TIG torch to shrink it and I might have to shrink this section right here. And then once I adjusted this over here, this corner, this made this section down here a little bit tight. So right now this will not fit in. This is probably two, probably two. And then up here, it starts to get a little bit better here. It's three. And then right here at the top, it's three. And then along here, this gap is good. This is three all the way along. So no, no work is needed here on this corner. What I'll probably need to do on this fender is to uh, whack it from the inside and just shift that flange over a little bit. So this is uh, close. So um, remember the strategy, strategy here is to align everything to the fixed portion of the car. That's the windshield, the rear window, the quarter windows, the cowling. Everything gets aligned to that because that could not be moved without serious tools. But everything else is adjustable. The fenders are adjustable, the hood's adjustable, the doors are adjustable. So I want to get the hood fit to the cowl and then the fenders fit to the hood and then the doors fit to the fenders and maybe the doors kind of fit to the cowl too. So it's a little bit of a circular approach, but that's what I'm going at right now. Here's a view of the cowl to hood gap, which is really all I'm concerned with right at this minute. So this has to be as good as possible. And I did massage this area right here, and I, and I know why, because this panel was crunched previously, and I stretched it out or, or took the wrinkles out of it. And in that process, it makes that part longer. So that's why it fit um, okay here, but not okay here. So after I've gone through and shrunk it and, and hammered it a little bit, um, it's still pretty straight. If I, if I look from the end, it's not, it's not all mangled. It's, uh, it's pretty good. And this is, this is three millimeters now. So I can slide this gauge all the way along. So it's hard to hold the camera, but this is, this is three everywhere you go. So that's what I was after. Also, if you look from this view, this has a straight edge on it. That's great. Let's check the other side and then let's move on. Okay, here's the driver's side. Running this through. Three millimeters all the way along. And then from this view, So that's only going to get better with additional body work. Okay, the next order of business is to manage the gap on this side. So the gap between the, the hood and the fender is just getting a little bit tight as we get down here close to the, uh, the bumper. Um, and that's new because the cowl gap has been adjusted and this is located just as it should be. So we got a three millimeter gap between the hood and the cowl and we also have the hood centered between the lines in the cowl. So the hood is centered left and right and front and back. Now we just need to make sure that the, uh, the fender lines up. So if you look at this sort of drip rail and the joint between the, the tub and the fender, we don't want to create any more of a gap than it's already here. So that means that in order to move this over about a millimeter, especially down here, this has to, the tub needs to be kind of shifted over to the right. And that means kind of bending the tub uh, over to the right just a little bit. I mean, I could put spacers between here, but the more spacers I put in there, then the, the, the less factory it looks. And uh, I just don't want to have a big gap right there. The factory had a little bit of a gap there where they, they included some uh, like seam sealer or uh, rubbery kind of clay compound in there. All right guys, now the method I'm gonna use now is what I call 
the brute force method. Um, these tubs are strong, and, and you want them to be strong. I mean, it's a sports car, and strong tubs mean uh, good, good uh, cornering, good suspension. So this is going to require some force. So if you're um, against the unethical treatment of Porsches, or if you don't want to see this thing get you know, completely smashed, then uh, you might want to skip ahead. But I'm about to hit this. I've tried hitting it with some smaller hammers. <clears throat> like, this is a, a, a jack hammer, a sledgehammer, a, like a, I don't know, maybe it's two or three pounds. This is not enough to move it. So, believe it or not, um, I have moved it a little bit already. Um, and I'm going to show you what I've done uh, on camera. And uh, this is, you know, not the safest thing. So, what I'm using is a 35 pound dumbbell. Um, now, <laughs> you know, this, oh, 30 pounds. So this, so this dumbbell is not safe because this is cast iron. This could break. I'm trying to be a little bit conservative because I don't want to push it past the point of, um, of a one millimeter, because if I push it too far, then that means I got to take the fender off and push it back. So I'm, I'm kind of sneaking up on it. I've taken some of the mounting bolts out so I can hit it squarely without the bolt being in, in its way. And I'm using this big iron block. This is kind of a buffer so that I don't just distort the flange. I'm trying to shift the whole thing. So I'm putting this right here and I'm hitting it with a 30 pound dumbbell. Okay, guys, this is, uh, this is good. This is all the way, uh, three millimeters, pretty consistently. Getting a little bit bigger here at the bottom, but definitely within margin, you know, the, the paint is gone on this side too. This is probably, probably four millimeters here at the bottom, but I'm pretty happy with the gap. It does get a little tighter at the top, but I think we can just fine tune that with the welting that goes in the, in the upper cow there. And uh, this, is, this is really good. I'm super happy with, uh, with how that worked out. And then on this side, kind of the same situation, um, that grill is loose, but um, three millimeters all the way up. Um, it's a little bit tight here in the middle. Probably adjust that with some, some, um, some putty between the fender. All the way up. So this means that the hood is now in the correct position. And then everything else is just referenced off of the hood. And now that the fenders are in the right gap, we can try to work on the, uh, the passenger door. Okay, here's the area that I, uh, I whacked pretty hard. So I put the, most of the screws all the way back in. This is all clamped down tight. And I didn't distort this too bad. I mean, this, this looks as good as it can be. This, uh, this drip rail is straight enough uh, to where it kind of looks natural all the way down to this area. And also you can see the gap between the drip rail and the fender, this gap right here. That gap is, is remaining pretty tight. So this, this looks factory, and I mean it is factory, but it doesn't look like it has been completely kludged together. Okay, the next thing to line up is the doors. And I wanna make sure that the doors line up to the, to the rear of the chassis um, and also to the rockers. But the rocker is missing on the section below. So this was due to some previous accident damage. This rocker, that's the piece laying down there on the bottom, has been straightened out. That's the original part, but it's been straightened out. 
So it's also probably been some been stretched a little bit. So I need to put it back in the original place. So I don't want to use the door to fit the rocker. I want to do it the other way around. I want the rocker to be the same as it was before the accident. So I'm going to use the other side and make sure that I have a consistent curvature. So these these rockers are not straight. If you put a straight edge on these, they, uh, they're not. So they have a slight bend from front to rear, and I want to make sure that I preserve that before, before I just willy-nilly put this piece on. So this piece has been fixed. That piece on the end has been added on. It's a little too big, so I'll trim it after it's welded on. But this flange, is there, it's got some holes in it so I can plug weld it in place. I'm gonna treat the inside uh, with some, um, some primer and some paint. And this side in here has already been, has already been treated, except for the, the spot where it gets welded on. That's bare metal. I'll use some weld through primer on that before I weld it on. But right now I'm just doing some trial fits, make sure this rocker gets in the right place. Here's a view of the lower door gap. And it, it looks pretty good. In fact, I can use I can use the door for a reference in height, but I don't want to use the door for a reference in sort of the in-out position. I want to make sure that the curvature is just like the other side. Okay, I've just started to tack in this lower section down here, part of the rocker, and it's just barely held in place. I have it supported here, trying to get the gaps on the bottom of the door correct. And um, most importantly, from, from the top view, I'm using, this, I'm using this straight edge. And I know from the other side that if I hold this here, I know that there's about a quarter of an inch gap on this side and a quarter of an inch gap on this side. And uh, so far, it looks like it's in the right place. But I still have to you know, massage this into place because this section right here is very stretched out. Stretched out because to get the dents out, it, it just required a lot of hammering and that means it's, it's kind of bulging. So I don't know if you can tell in the, in the shot here, but this is, this is a little bit bulging right here. So I'm, um, I'm tacking it in place, both top and, top and bottom, and then I'm just hammering this gently uh, down while it's in the car. Here's a quick shot of the door gap, looking at it from sort of the bottom uh, leg on the floor. I'm continuing to work this uh, bulge down a little bit, just using my hammer um, and checking it with the straight edge. So I really don't want this to be straight, um, but I can use the straight edge to understand how much curvature there is. So this up high is good, but down low here, it's, uh, I can tell it's bulged out a little bit here towards the right. Okay, everything's lining up pretty well with this new rocker install, but one trouble I'm having, as I mentioned earlier, um, there's no access behind here, so I can't use my normal um, hammer and dolly method to stretch the welding area back out. So I have done this. This is an um, adapter that I have that goes to my slide hammer. So I'm actually welding that right where the seam is, and uh, as I go, I'm able to pull the shrinkage back out, um, or at least get these panels to line up a little bit better. I think it was slightly depressed um, based on the way the parts were to begin with, because I haven't done a lot of welding here. But uh, I'm about to ha put my slide hammer on this and just pull it out so it's even, so that there's really uh, very minimal filler on this. Okay, the car is still on jack stands so I can access the, uh, the weld underneath here. I'm having to lay down and, and do the TIG welding upside down again. Um, but I just wanted to point out the position of the door. So the door has this, this body line here on the cowl and it continues here with this ridge on the top of the door. 
And, and this is lined up pretty well. Um, and so I, I, what I want to do is I want to line up the door as best I can to the parts that don't move. So this looks like it's a good alignment. Also the distance between the, or the clearance between the door and its door jam is about the same as it is back here. And, and that's good. So that means the position of the door, both front and rear, is okay. Now this really needs to be checked with the car resting on all four tires because it, the chassis could flex a little bit when it's on jack stands. This is preliminary. I just wanted to show you kind of the next step as I'm waiting for that to cool down. The gap along this side is looking pretty good. And then all the way down here on the bottom, the gap is, is pretty nice on the bottom as well, especially where the new rocker is, is able to get that to fit pretty nicely. Uh, you can get an idea of the rocker um, curvature there. It's, it's, it's looking pretty good. All right, guys, I got the rocker fully welded on and I'm pretty happy with it. It's, uh, like I said, it's not perfect, but it is, you know, good enough. You can see here that it's pretty level across the part that matters the most. And the gap from sort of front to rear is, is, is good enough. Um, it does dive in just a little bit like right there. I don't know if you can tell, but it does dive in. And the only way to, to really do that any better than this would be to take the complete rocker off and weld it together into one piece and then reattach it. And I just didn't want to go through that much work. Now I am going through the, uh, the door gap situation and making the door fit the tub as best as possible. Um, so there's no latch on the door and that's done by purpose because sometimes the latch can kind of disguise some of the gaps and you'll be fighting them later on. So all I've done is I've put a magnet across the door gap where it's the most important. This is kind of line of sight. And I'm just going around and, and looking at um, things that need to be adjusted. So, so this is pretty even across the top here. Um, the up and down position is pretty good. The door gap along the bottom is pretty good. So here's my, here's my three millimeter checker tool again. And this is about three and a half, three. This is probably three and a half, maybe close to four here. Along the bottom, I'm getting about, um, getting about three, three, Yeah, the whole bottom's about three. I think it opens up a little bit over here. Yeah, this is about four right here. Uh, yeah, at least four. It's, it's flush here where the magnet is. And then down here, um, there is a mismatch. And that's a mismatch of probably uh, about an eighth of an inch. I don't know if you can see there, but there's, I'm rocking, I'm rocking this and it's, it's not fitting. So this portion of the door is pushed in a little bit. Um, and then over here, this portion of the door is sticking out just a little bit proud of the uh, rocker that I just put in. If you remember, I, I didn't want the rocker to meet the door. I wanted the rocker to meet the other side. So I preserved the curvature of the rocker, but that now means that the door is sticking out a little too far. Now, I can adjust the hinges on the door to scoot this in a little bit, which I will but that's gonna make matters over here worse. Okay, that did the trick down here. So this is a, a good um, position across the uh, sill or rocker to bottom of the door. And here it's okay. So about the midpoint of the door is okay. But when I get in this region right here, this whole section from here to here is uh, pushed in. All right, now this is gonna be, a, this is the tough situation I'm in now because I have it lined up here where the door handle is. I have it lined up um, behind my back where the hinge panels are. And I still have this low area down low. Um, this is something I can't adjust with the hinges because if I adjust the hinges, then it'll be wrong uh, up here where it meets the front rocker. 
So at this point, it's time to use the brute force method again. Um, I'm gonna try to twist the door. So the door has a inner frame structure and I'm gonna try to twist it so um, this is gonna come out and this is gonna remain or where it is or go in. Okay, I just made this, this block of wood here. Uh, it's a two by four. It's gonna go right there. Okay, so the door won't close, but I'm gonna push it to twist it. I'm just making sure the hinges are tight before I really push on this thing. It's now slightly better. It's looking looking pretty good from right here. But right here still has a little bit of a dip to it. All right, the 30 pound dumbbell um, seems to have done the trick. This is uh, straight across, straight across. Of course, the magnet's holding it here, straight across. And then down here at the rocker, it is, it is a good, it's a good fit. There's the rocker fully welded in and the door is meeting up pretty well. So remember, we fixed this up here as well. This is now straight up and down, no offsets. As usual, I did not get as much done as I wanted to get done this week. My hopes were to install this piece uh, for the front fender, and it's gonna need a lot of work, I can tell, just by trial fit. So I didn't get to it this week, but we did get a lot done. Uh, we got the, uh, the A-pillars checked, for uh, squareness with the windscreen. We got the front hood um, dialed in according to the tub and the cowl, those gaps uh, dialed in. And then we got the front fender gaps all the way down to the front bumper. Those are, are pretty close. And then we were able to get the rocker installed uh, down here. This lower section was missing. Uh, I spent a lot of time trying not to cave this in. Um, it's not 100% perfect, but it is gonna be uh, it's the best I can do. You saw me with the slide hammer there, uh, getting that uh, uh, distortion out. And then we got, finally we got this door in pretty good position. So it's fitting the tub pretty nicely at the rear. It's fitting here at the uh, A-pillar pretty nice. The only thing left to do is to put the fender back on and manage this front door gap. And that's the last piece of the puzzle, which is sometimes the most difficult. So I'm gonna be, working on that at a different episode. So thanks again for watching. It's not every day that you get to see someone smack their Porsche with a you know, 30 pound hammer or dumbbell and actually make it better. So uh, I know it was uh, kind of cringy to watch. It doesn't look like a very true, tried and true method, but I used it on the front tub to get the, the front fender gaps to line up. And then I used it here on this door too to twist the door into shape. So. Once again, it's, uh, it's, it's a DIY method. It's something that um, I did with what I had laying around. Um, so you can provide your comments uh, below on what you, what you think about that. But I'll see you next week. Please don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. You can also see us on Instagram or Facebook at Time. Take care, see you next week.